What is up my dudes? Hello, Squirrel Tribe 2.0, basically my OGs. I'm pretty sure the majority of you are my OGs. Uh, how are you guys doing? It's Thursday. I hope you had a good day. I hope yesterday's hump day was good. I couldn't make it to you for a video, but I did put up the short, which we'll talk about in a second. But first, what I'd like to do and just real quickly is point out the fact that even though I live at the beach, I don't know how to not turn into a freaking lobster. You can tell just by looking like right here, how the sunscreen that I put on in certain areas yesterday took in some areas and not in others as it's red here, not so red, not so red, blazing red, weird little dip right there. Y'all look what I've done to myself. And then I don't know what's happening over here. I look like a weird little leper. Like there's little spots that, but yeah, I'm a friggin' lobster. And the downside is I wore an actual bathing suit. I, I hate bathing suits, but I wore, I wore a one piece, right? And I sat in a chair and I took my shorts off and my t-shirt off and I hung out and I got some sun. I laid out on the ground. I took a book and I read a book and the man was on his computer doing work because he always works uh, when, we, when we're out places. He likes to get stuff done when he can. He doesn't always work. Y'all know what I mean. But he, he does a lot of computer stuff. So I'm laying out and he says to me, do you want me to spray the back of your legs for you with some sunscreen? I was like, no, 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 they're fine. My legs see the sun anytime I'm walking. Y'all, I forget that I don't wear shorts. My legs have seen the sun maybe three times since last summer and that was at Universal and it was kind of overcast. So they didn't really see any sun, they just saw oxygen, right? And so I was like, no, it's fine. It's not a big deal whatsoever. I'll be perfectly fine. The parts of me that are burnt today, mm -mm. Mm -mm. We're not going to talk about how I woke up in the middle of the night because my calves hurt because I, I moved them too hard against the blankets and the sunburn woke me up, my calves, just so we're all fully aware. And then that little spot that's like right here where the top of your bathing suit is, oh y'all, that's redder than this. I didn't think about the fact that these parts of me don't see the sun. So when it did see the sun, it soaked it all up and was like, you know what? Let's make her wake up and wonder if she's a lobster or not. So I am burnt to high heaven right now. My back, my, my here, all here, my legs, top of my foot, because that's the most painful part of it all. So that's fun. So I'm not going to go out into the sun anytime soon, just so we're all fully aware. Hey, listen, I hope you guys are having a really good day. If you watched the short that um, the man and I put up yesterday on the channel, I wanted new sunglasses. Look, my hair is so gross. The whole plan was to wash my hair today so I could explain to you why I picked the sunglasses that I picked and show them off, right? But this sunburn means I did not shower today. High possibility I'm not gonna shower tomorrow either. Yay for body wipes. You know what I'm saying? To hit all the who's and the ha's and the what's it's. We're gonna be using those instead. There'll probably be no husband wifey time for at least 24, 48 hours and be like, uh, -uh don't touch nothing. <laughs> Stay away from all of it because either it's burnt or I just don't want you near it while everything hurts, like basically how that, how that's going to go. But anyway, so I did not take a shower. So you get this, this like literally oily ponytail. And because I put the top down on the Jeep, it's like a small little rat's nest happening back here. But the whole reason I wanted new sunglasses, it's not because I don't have sunglasses that work. I have sunglasses that do their job. They block the sun or make it so I can look directly at the sun and not die because they're polarized, whatever. I have a pair of Maui gems already, but those Maui gems have that nose piece that has metal. And the second you put it up on your forehead like that or on your head like that, you're gonna spend an hour screaming and crying and trying to detangle them from your hair. So that's not feasible. So normally what I do, please hold, Normally what I do, um, let me show off my little sunglass world bag here where I got my sunglasses yesterday. Normally what I do is I have little $10 sunglasses like this all over the place. Can y'all see how incredibly dirty they are, number one? Can y'all even see through there? I have these so that I don't wear them like this. At no point in time do I wear these like this. They are strictly for that, to literally hold these little hairs out of my face while I drive with the top down on the Jeep. Normally I have the bun and I have the sunglasses up. That's what these are for. I have them in my car, the man's car, probably like three or four pairs stashed around the apartment somewhere and probably a pair at my mom's house, probably left one at my sister-in-law's house because you just never know. But that's all these are used for is to hold the hair back. I don't ever wear them like this because I don't generally wear sunglasses in the sun because I don't want the sunglass mark. So even at the beach, I'm trying to lay back and I'm like, the sun is burning through your eyelids, ma'am. I can feel your retinas just like melting. I still will not put sunglasses on my face because the way I burned, I would have had white all right here. And y'all have been like, ma'am, you look stupid. I'm gonna need you to fix that. And I'd been like, I don't really know how unless I just burn my eyes next. So these are what I do. I do this. That way I can just literally do this, right? But I told the man, I said, hey man, <laughs> I really wish I had a pair of sunglasses that were polarized 
that I could do that with. So we went by Sunglass World because it's over right next to um, Magnolia Soap in Destin Commons where G.I. Justin owns the store, him and his wife Lauren, that's their place, the, the Magnolia Soap there. So we went over to Sunglass World and they had a sale. They had like 25 to 30% off. I think it was 25 or 30%, maybe it was dollars. There was a sale. I don't remember exactly how it worked, but they had a sale sign outside and I was like, hey, let's go in and just look at stuff. So the man, he has Costas. He likes his Costas. And I had a pair of, I have a pair of Costas also, but again, they have that metal nose piece and I can't, and it's right. Just, uh. so I use those in the Maui gyms normally if we're on a boat somewhere or, um, but even then I put them on and after five minutes, I take them off and then I put them back on and then I take them off. That way my face can, in theory, stay even with the whole burn to non-burn ratio of places. I, it may sound stupid, but it's how I roll, whatever. So I'll, I'll wear them, then I'll take them off, wear them, take them off. And I'm always worried I'm going to take them off. And while holding them in my hand, the wind is just going to knock them out of my hands, or I'm going to set them down, or I'm going to do something stupid with them. And then my hair is still blowing all over the place. So I'm like, gosh, it would be so nice if I had a pair that I could wear here and then throw them up and they're polarized and they're whatever. So yesterday when we went, I looked at Costa's, I looked at Maui Gems, I looked at Ray-Ban and I looked at Oakley's, okay? And if you haven't seen it, go watch the short, either pause this and go watch it so this makes way more sense or watch it afterwards. So then you're like, oh, that made sense. So I tried on four different pair. Now, three of the four that I tried on are kind of like what I always do, this tortoise shell, brown, whatever. The second pair of the four that I tried on, the first pair was Oakley, the second pair were the Ray-Bans. They were like rounded and they had a fatter side and they felt very, I don't, it, I know it's not correct at all, but they felt more Hollywood to me, which doesn't make sense. They're just basic sunglasses, but I felt they were nicer, a little fancier, whatever, and I really liked them. And then I tried on two pairs of Costas that were, one was like a cat eye kind of thing and one was a little more basic, but they all were really cool. But three out of four reminded me of stuff that I always, always get. So I went the different route because I was like, you know what, if you're gonna do it, just do it, right? So I got the Oakleys. Now the Oakleys, in case you did not watch the short yet or whatever else, the Oakleys, Look at the case. It comes with a little wristlet part of the case too, which is very nice for ladies. So that if you want to take your sunglasses, but you don't want to put them in your pocket like a dude and then look like a dude because they're in your pocket. You know what I'm saying? You can just do this right here. So I got the Oakleys and they are so outside of my comfort zone. I'm not even going to lie because they're not like anything I ever would have picked before. But when I tell you I wore them today and I got out of the Jeep and I'm, I'm getting out of the Jeep and I'm walking in and the man sends me a message and he goes, I got to say, those sunglasses look really cool getting out of that Jeep. So I went with the Oakley Aviators. I feel, like I said in the short, I feel a little bit like Maverick right now, which is extra baller as the fighter jets fly overhead and I get out of the Jeep and the wind is blowing and I'm like, yeah, what's up? You know, that, that's, but here's the thing. Look what I can do. See that? And then I do this and then I do this and then I do this and y'all, I can do this. 10,000 times and guess what it's not going to do? Yank my freaking hair out of the top of my head because here's why. They have the nose pieces, but they're rubber. They're freaking rubber. So they're not going to yank my hair out. So look at this. So that's why I tried on all those ones yesterday because the other three were shaped like this thing though. So they were all one solid piece. Open. They were shaped like this. So it's all one solid piece, right? And like I said, I've had 10,000 of those, but these they're, it's like a little extra, the little rubber parts, an extra piece, but y'all, I can just all day long. And then I decide, hey, it's getting a little overcast or hey, you're headed away from the sun or hey, you just want to show off them, them eyes, ma'am. Watch it, God. Look it, cook it. Right up into my hair. And then later on, I'm like, don't look at me. Let me, uh, that way you can't see what I'm looking at. I'm blind like Ray Charles. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you don't know what's happening. I got these on. So, oh, y'all can see my living room too. Hey, look. Can you see the dirty dishes? Yeah, you can look look right there. You can see the dirty dishes right there. But the couch is made. Can y'all see that? Yeah. And then you can see the man's workstation right there. All right. So these are cool. You can see literally everything. Like a, you get a 360 view all at once. Hey, camera. Wait, where's my hand? There's the camera. <laughs> so that's what these, I got the Oakleys. I loved them and they were on sale, which was a plus because honestly, Oakley's, Costa's, Ray-Bans, they're not cheap y'all, but for polarized sunglasses that I can take back in there anytime and have them fix them, clean them, whatever else, I, it's worth it for me. I've tried uh, polarized sunglasses from like Walmart and Target before and 
even though I'm not sad when they get pushed off my head in the middle of an ocean or you lose them in a foam party in Cancun, Mexico, it's still, they, they're not the same. They don't do as well as some of these higher brands do. So I'm loving these mama jammas right now. So hopefully, um, don't lose them. I'm not going to wear them into the ocean. I know that much, but I love the fact that they do this and can do this. So just want to let you guys know about that. Hey, so this morning, the man and I, I got these little hairs that are sticking out and again, cause I can't wash my hair cause it would hurt. Water hurts when you're sunburned in case you don't know. So my hair is bugging the crap out of me. So this morning, the man and I, we had to drop the Porsche off for service because the passenger side air conditioner sick and just quit air conditioning. So we dropped it off there to get looked at. And then after that, we had to drop Maxi Poo. Um, sorry, my eye is itching like a mofo right now. We had to drop Maxi Poo off to get groomed because he stinks. He's a stinky dude. You under, you realize your dog needs a bath when you walk into your apartment and everything's fine, but you get over by where he likes to sleep and you're like, smells like dog right about here. Yeah, time for um, a super bath and a groom. It's hot now and he has a tendency to pant so much that I'm like, broski, I need to put a paper bag to your mouth or you're gonna pass out, right? Especially after he goes and runs around the dog park and stuff. But um, so he, he was gross. He needed a groom. So went and dropped him off for a groom. And then the man and I went to our one of our favorite breakfast places, Two Birds Cafe in Miramar Beach. I think it's in Miramar Beach. We went there for a breakfast, brunch, whatever, because it was like 12 o'clock by the time I got there. And we love that place. Service is always great. Everything is lovely, right? But today when we went, because it is a very touristy time right now, spring break for a lot of people, all the tables were dirty. Everybody like got there and ate and left at the same time. So half the tables were taken and the other half still needed to be cleared off because everybody had just finished. So the man and I were like, well, let's go sit at the bar area that um, they have and we'll, we'll go over there. Now, I will say we always have good service. And today was not bad service, but it was different service. When you're not at a table, you don't get the same level of service, it seems. Uh, feel like we were kind of like in the forgotten side, possibly the food was still really good, but we had to ask a few times for some things. But again, service is always, always good there. Today was just like a little off because it was busier than we've ever seen it there. So that's probably why, but it got me thinking about, they have a uh, now hiring sign on the door and I counted the employees that were in there. There was probably four or five in the kitchen area cooking. Cause when you go by the kitchen to the bathroom, if the door happens to open, you can see inside, right? I saw four or five employees in there and there were at least six employees out front and the whole place has maybe, maybe 10 tables inside and four tables outside. It's not a big location whatsoever, right? So with that many employees, it should be easy to take care of everything, but everything was a little off today, right? So they have a now hiring sign. And I was telling, I was telling Kevin, you know, the man, I said, well, actually he said, are they now hiring because they plan on firing or do you think they need more people? Cause they have plenty of servers here. It seems. And I mentioned them, I was like, well, school is almost out. So I wonder if the now hiring is a preemptive hiring for when summer hits, because you have to think when school is out, a lot of people don't have the ability to pay for daycare anymore. They don't have the means for that. So they're going to either have to step back their hours at work so they can have their kids with them or be home with their kids over the summer. Or some people want the ability to travel as much as they can in the summer because that's when the kids, if they have kids, can also travel. So I was like, well, maybe they want to hire more so that instead of having five servers that work 30 hours a week, you have 10 servers that work, can't do math, however many hours a week. I would say that would knock it down to 15, but hopefully not. But maybe they're going to have more servers who can... Um, that way other servers can take time off. You know what I mean? So that you have a fill in. Maybe they're hiring somebody who's just like an on-call person. Like I, at first I was like me, I'll do it. I'll go wait the tables. Whenever y'all need me, just call me. I'll drop whatever I'm doing and I'll head over there and help out because I like people and it's fun. And I used to love waiting tables. Like literally I've had, <laughs> I had a ton of jobs when I was younger. I'm not gonna lie. I've worked a little bit of everything, literally everything, car dealership, hair salons, um, clothing stores, nightclub, um, commercial, um, manufacturing kind of stuff. Like I've worked everywhere. Right. But waiting tables was literally one of my favorite because you got to meet so many new people so often that it was just really cool. Right. Um, what was it saying? So I wonder if like, that's the thing I would, I would go do that. But I saw this article 
earlier today and it, it kind of ties into what I'm thinking about with the whole restaurant and trying to hire more so that more people have time with their kids this summer or whatever else. But it said here, are robot waiters the future? Some restaurants think so. And before I even read it, which y'all know, I don't read these ahead of time. So I still haven't technically read it. I've just like glanced at the top of it. Um, before even this, I think there's a place in Destin, uh, in Destin Commons called Gulf Coast Burgers, and they have a robot server technically. So it's a robotic cart that brings your food out to you. Like the, there's no server. You don't get a server. You, you order through either an app or a thing on the table. I can't remember. We've only been there one time uh, when the moms are here. You order either through the app or on the table thing. And then the, um, when the food is ready, the, the cooks in the back put it on this tray, on this um, robotic thing with the drinks and everything, and it rolls its way out to you. And then it's up to you as the patron to get up and get your stuff off the tray and hand it out to the people at your table, which I'm like, feels very cafeteria style, but like in a new kind of way, right? But anyway, so when it said our robot, what is the future? I was like, I need to click on this and see what's happening. So according to this, this article is on Yahoo because I do like Yahoo. It says you may have already seen them in restaurants, waist high machines that can greet guests, lead them to tables, deliver food and drinks and ferry dirty dishes to the kitchen. Some have cat like faces and even purr when you scratch their heads. This is in Madison Heights, Michigan. Quick, quick question. Just one like serious question. At what point in time would it occur to you to pet or scratch the top of a robot's head? Is it shaped like a cat? Like, I don't understand that part. It, that's just me. It says, but are robots waiters of the future? It's a question the restaurant industry is increasingly trying to answer. Many think robot waiters are the solution to the industry's labor shortage. Sales of them have been growing rapidly in recent years with tens of thousands now gliding through dining rooms worldwide. There's no doubt in my mind that this is where the world is going, said Dennis Reynolds, Dean of the Hilton College of Global Hospitality Leadership at the University of Houston. The world's longest business card. Like, could y'all make smaller names? Okay. The school's restaurant began using a robot in December and Reynolds says it has eased the workload for human staff and made service more efficient. Now, without going any farther, that part makes sense to me. So the restaurant today, Two Birds, I think it's Two Birds Cafe, coffee, cafe and coffee. I don't know what it's called. It's Two Birds. We just call it Two Birds. Wait, hold on. I have a thing. I have, oh, so it is Two Birds Coffee and Cafe. We like their mugs because they have the, the kind of lip here that like when you drink, it's like a easy pour. It doesn't have like that fat, whatever. So Two Birds Coffee and Cafe. So, um, Please hold, forgot what I was saying because my kid just sent me a mess, text message and I can't read it from here. Uh, what did I just say? Oh, so that she's just going crazy with messages. So what I was thinking is um, at, the, at the restaurant today, the dirty tables, having, having some sort of robot server that could either come through and I don't know how they clean off tables. I don't know how that part works. That seems like it'd be helpful, right? If you had like a busboy robot that could come through and clean off the table so that you as a server did not have to take time away from the tables you do have and what you need to do to keep their drinks replenished and their food coming and the conversation going to stop and go clean off this table. Having a robot that could come through and do that technically would make sense. And I know people are going to say, well, that's why you hire a busboy. Here's the thing though. So many places in order to hire a busboy would probably have to lay off a server. There's so many places that don't have the means and ability to hire more humans because of workman's comp, because of paid time off sick leave, because of vacation pay, because of the, uh, the possibility of injury. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of reasons why a lot of companies would probably rather go the route of robot versus human, which in the long run, if you stop and think about it really does suck because at some point they're just going to go all robot and no human. But for right now, um, in order to stay afloat, I think there are a lot of places that could benefit from that robot that either seats you at a table, like you walk into the front door and it's there and you type, you punch in, you know, how many people you have and it turns and it scans and then it takes you to a table. That part would make sense to me. If there's a robot that could somehow clean off the tables without dropping the silverware and the drinks and the whatever else, that part also would make sense to me because those are two jobs that generally speaking are going to be saved for younger kids, 15, 16, 17, which I don't want to give away jobs to younger kids. They need to have that get into the workforce kind of job, you know, but that is something that may 
enable a restaurant, especially a smaller one to stay afloat during like not peak season. You know what I mean? Like, like slower hours. Like I swear the world's biggest bird just flew past my front, like, like the side door here. I don't know what that was. The thing was freaking massive. But anyway, squirrel distracted. Hold on. Okay. So if they had had something like that, that would have been cool. But this thing here is talking about like person shaped style robots doing everything. I think from what I saw in the picture. So let's say here, um, others say robot waiters aren't much more than a gimmick that have a long way to go before they can replace humans. They can't take orders and many restaurants have steps, outdoor patios and other physical challenges they can't adapt to. Restaurants are pretty chaotic places, so it's very hard to insert automation in a way that is really productive, said Craig LeClaire, a vice president with the consul consulting company Forrester who studies automation. Still, the robots are proliferating. Redwood, C Redwood City, California-based Bear Robotics introduced its Servi robots in 2021 and expects to have 10,000 deployed by the end of this year in 44 U.S. states and overseas. Look, I don't like the word deployed. I immediately think war, just so we're all fully aware in a takeover. I don't think you should be using the word deployed with robots right now because that feels very iRobot movie. If you haven't seen it with Will Smith and I don't remember the girl's name, you should watch it. It's a very, very good movie. Uh, where are we? Hold on. Shenzhen, China-based Pudu Robotics, which, has, which was founded in 2016, has deployed more than 56,000 robots worldwide. That's even scarier. China has deployed robots worldwide. We got Chinese robots roaming around our restaurants collecting your credit card info. Who? No, we're not going to go there. This is the happy channel. We're not going to go there because my brain goes quick going to those places immediately. Uh, every restaurant chain is looking toward as much automation as possible, said Phil Zing of Rich Tech Robotics, an Austin-based marker maker of robot servers. People are going to see these everywhere in the next year or so. Where do they have robots besides the golf place? Um, they have something like that in Universal, but I can't remember exactly what I saw. I don't remember if it's in any of the videos I put up. I have the world's crappiest memory. I'm not going to lie. Um, I don't, I don't remember. I'm going to have to look back and think. So Lee Zai was having trouble finding staff for Noodle Topia, his Madison Heights, Michigan restaurant in the summer of 2021. So he bought a Bellabot from Pudu Robotics. Look, I'm not going to lie. Bellabot immediately started to think of like, that's the, <laughs> the adult version of a fake girlfriend instead of like a blow up doll or whatever doll you just buy yourself a Bella bot and just drag her along with you when you go places. The robot was so successful. He added two more. Now one robot leads diners to their seats while another delivers bowls of steaming noodles to tables as empl employees pile dirty dishes onto a third robot to shuttle back to the kitchen. So even then, if you have a robot, um, bus, bus robot, bus boy, bus thing, whatever that goes to the table, you as a server, put it in there. At least you don't have to go all the way back to carry the stuff. So it does save time there. It says here that now Zai only needs three people to do the same volume of business that five or six people used to handle. That's where my issue comes in. Cutting the jobs to bring these in, as opposed to adding these in to make the people that are there more productive. To me, that makes sense. Bringing one in to make what you already have more productive to bring three in to get rid of three people is where I think we're going to start to see businesses lose loyalty with their customers. I personally know that if I were to go back to two birds, again, one of my favorite places, if I were to go there and they said, oh, well, we used to have 10 servers. We got rid of five servers and brought in five robots. I wouldn't go back. However, if we go in and they have 10 servers and they've brought in five robots to help, I would stay because then that means the company puts the people first because they brought these robots in to help the people and to make things easier for the, the customers and, and the workers at the same time. It's not all about the profits. That would be different to me. I would totally stay then. It says here that uh, a robot costs around $15,000, he said, but a person costs $5,000 to $6,000 per month. And that's what I was saying. That's where I think we're going to have the issue that as much as I would rather you bring a robot in to help the employees you already have, a lot of these places are going to boot out the employees they have to bring in this robot who at one time cost $15,000 versus that employee who $5,000 a month for 12 months. It really does start to add up. And unfortunately, we're going to see a lot more places that are like, you know what? It's been great having like humans here, but scoot, scoot. 
bring in the robots. It's going to suck. I'm just going to say, um, as I said, the robots give human servers more time to mingle with customers, which increases tips. The, and customers often post videos of the robots on social media that entice others to visit. Uh, besides saving labor, the robots generate business. Interactions with human servers can vary. Betsy Guerin Reynosa, who works with a Bella bot at the sushi factory in West Melbourne, Florida, said the robot can be a pain. You can't really tell it to move or anything, she said. She has also had customers who don't want to interact with it. I will say that both of these places are Asian food companies using the robots. So that's just a random coincidence, I think. Whatever. Um... Da, da, da. But overall, the robot is a plus. It saves her trips back and forth to the kitchen and gives her more time with customers. Labor shortages accelerated the adoption of robots globally, LeClaire said. In the U.S., the restaurant industry employed 15 million people at the end of the last year, but that was still 400,000 fewer than before the pandemic, according to the National Restaurant Association. In a recent survey, 62% of restaurant operators told the association they don't have enough employees to meet customer demand. Here's the thing. They also don't want to hire enough employees to meet customer demand. And it's not just restaurants, all kinds of places. They don't want to hire enough people to meet demands of what they need to get done, therefore resulting in unhappy customers. Again, a lot of times the profit is more important than the people. There's a whole rest of this article, but we're not going to do that. I just thought that was interesting. And that was it. I just wanted to mention that to you because after, after today, seeing how now that the business is picking up, how it was a little bit harder for them to stay on top of everything like they normally would be able to. And then I saw the article, I was like, ah, it kind of makes sense. Listen, I'm not gonna lie. People have Roombas in their houses. My sister-in-law, brother-in-law got us a little Roomba vacuum thing to go through and vacuum up the floors when I didn't have time. We ended up giving it back to them only because the dog and the Roomba, they didn't get along. They didn't mix well. There's a lot of barking, a lot of trying to stomp on the Roomba, a lot of kicking the Roomba. So we had to get rid of the Roomba and now I'm back to sweeping and vacuuming, which is fine. I like the old fashioned way of cleaning things or not if you saw the dirty dishes in the sink, which will sit there for a minute. Um, but that's just it. I just, there are things I know that like robots make life easier for a lot of people, but it's also going to be the downfall of people like robots. It's, it's crazy. It's just crazy. In my opinion, it's just crazy. Hey, listen, I love y'all. I hope you're doing good. Hey, this is my, oh, side note. Somebody asked me about the, the manly, the manly version of the squirrel trap. <laughs> this is it. It's the, it's just, I mean, it's plain. There's no squirrel on it and it's manly colors. So for any of you dudes, like dude dudes, not like dudette dudes, but any of you dude dudes who are out there who want a shirt, this is, um, it's under, it's on the, it, there's like a link in the description or on the channel or something like that. I will tell you that Teespring, where I have these coming from, um, because I haven't figured out how to, I need to make my own website at some point, I'm sure, but I haven't figured out how to like manufacture these myself and ship them out and stuff like that and, and keep costs down. Not that I'm not going to lie. These aren't like the cheapest t-shirts because they're not the cheapest t-shirts. Like I pick good material because I love, I love this tri-blend thing. It's like super comfortable, but they, they Teespring did have like a minute or two. Like I ordered something January 26th and for some reason, February was like a whole crap show for Teespring. And I didn't get even my shirts until second week of March, but now they're back on track. Just FYI, if anybody out there has ordered anything and it has not shown up yet, please understand Teespring. They're on it now, but for some reason, February, they were just like, meh, but everything seems to be good to go now. So that's that. Uh, I got to do a couple things before I go get the kid from school, like wash these dishes. So I'm going to do that now. I love you all immensely. I hope you like my, uh, my Maverick shades. I'm gonna go watch Maverick later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like Rooster though. I like, uh, Goose's son. Look, but here's the thing. I have a tendency when I talk, this eyebrow goes up. I've had people leave comments before. They're like, you know, your eyebrows are uneven. Nope. It's just my face. It's just the way I do things. Like the eyebrows, they, they do weird things. And so it's very noticeable when I have sunglasses on, if I don't keep my eyebrows down and it's very hard. Look, I'm literally focusing on keeping them down because normally it's going to be there. <laughs> so it's very difficult for me to wear sunglasses just because I don't know to look I'm like the rock. I don't know how to keep my eyebrows from doing dumb eyebrow things, but that's all. Now I'll let you go. I love you all immensely. I hope you have a good rest of your Thursday. My dudes, hey, I'll see you before Mimosa Monday, but just know Mimosa Monday, 5 p.m. live stream on Monday, but I'll be back here before then. I don't know if it'll be a live stream before then, but for sure, Mimosa Monday. Okay, love you guys. Bye.